Here we go. Ready? Ready. Let's go. Have you been to Germany? I have not. No, it's be the first uh, first time. Done the uh, the London games four times, different places, and see the obviously the first time for Germany. So here we go. With the neutral side game, mean, normally as an offense, you know, like your home crowd's going to be on your side, or your road is going to be hostile. You got to be ready for all that. Do you kind of have to be prepared for both? The neutral side, you don't know. The crowd's yeah, I think uh, going into a neutral site game, just got to be ready to react to, you know, however the crowd ebbs and flows throughout the course of the game. So we'll be ready to handle it, and I, I'm sure it'll be an exciting atmosphere when it starts, especially. When you take a look at the Bucks, Vita Vea, not only six and a half sacks, but it's the large yards lost on those sacks. How do you try to minimize his rush? Yeah, I think he does a great job using his hands, pushing the pocket, and, uh, you know, for such a big guy, he can redirect and, and, you know, really their interior push in general, and then you add the backers as, as great blitzers as well. You know, they generate a lot of, a lot of uh, interior pocket uh, chaos. So you got to do a great job, you know, knowing where he's at, uh, you know, and our guys will be, be great with their technique and, and really fighting through the echo of the whistle on every play. Is Gina getting the ball out fast enough as is, or will there need to be a little bit of help to just kind of, again, minimize the game? I think as long as Gino's staying in the rhythm of the plays, uh, you know, generally speaking, and, and guys are working and, and things are working out, you know, we'll, we'll be in good shape there. But, again, always having to have a presence every every week. You know, we've dealt with different uh, pass rushers and, and different teams have different guys that are highlighted. But, you know, they, they have a deep group, so it's not just him. There's a lot of other guys to worry about throughout the course of the game. Uh, but making sure that we're on point technique-wise. And for Gino, that starts with his uh, timing and rhythm in the pass game. Shane, how's the play card wristband helped Geno Smith and it helped you when you have up the 15 second mark? Yeah, I think, you know, having the, the, the wristband is just something that, that we can always utilize, you know, especially some of the calls that might get a little wordy. Uh, and, and really, it's not for, for Geno's ability to call the plays. It's really for the, the quick transition from me giving him the play to, to so I don't have to regurgitate the entire thing and then he has to do it again. So, you know, it's different different places I've been, different experiences, uh, been able to utilize it. And it's been something that's been helpful throughout the course of this uh, year, just uh, from a communication standpoint. Why didn't you use it last year? Uh, just different different uh, people are used to different things. So, you know, when we were talking in the off season, it was, off season is one of the things that uh, that we'd brought up and the, the quarterbacks had talked through. And I think just different experiences, you know, even, uh, you know, in the years prior in, uh, in L.A., that wasn't a, a necessarily a wristbanded system. And I think a lot of times you're a pro, uh, you know, product of your latest experiences. And, and then uh, for me, just trying to keep growing within uh, the system as well in, in terms of calling the plays and making sure we have a clean operation. And, and so really referencing back to some of the past experiences there, felt like it was a good thing to, to, to bring on board. So you didn't have it in L.A. either? Yeah. Your quarterback's environment. So was this your idea, or how was the evolution of I think It was just it? communication between the staff and, and the quarterbacks, you know, everyone having a little bit of input and, and, and feeling how, you know, how they want to do it and, you know, what's the best thing for us at the end of the day. That was in part of mini camps, I guess? Or? Yeah. Is yep. as simple as you just telling him a number and finding the number on the card? Yeah, there's 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 a lot of a uh, process there. Yeah, it's not, the, it's not the most complex process in the world, but keep the uh, finer details in-house. You did it all preseason already. Right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. What was your? Everybody's talked about how sort of Palm Gino was after the big six and kind of just came back and played all that. But what, what, when you talk to him, kind of what's the situation? Yeah, Gino's ability to respond when things have gone. Uh, good or, or bad has, has been uh, really great throughout the course of this season. Uh, and I think, you know, this was the latest one of, of something that, you know, obviously not something we expected. Great play by them. All of a sudden it's a pick six going the other way. Uh, but, but there's a lot more uh, ball to be played right there. And, and Gino came to the sideline, uh, no flinch, no blink, ready to play the next series. And, you know, just a testament to how level-headed he's been and, and uh, throughout the course of the game, not letting, you know, the play before affect the next play. Yeah, I think especially in that, that third end of the third and fourth quarter, you know, Ken got more and more efficient with the runs. It wasn't a game of big explosive runs, but it was a game of, of chipping away and early on chipping away and, and the offensive line sticking together, the tight ends, and, and everyone just having that, that belief that eventually these are going to get going. And, and really, uh, you know, the time of the game when they did, when it was those last three drives when we really needed to run the ball the most, you know, those runs started to come to life. And, you know, it's just a credit to the offensive line with how they were playing through the echo of the whistle, you know, even that going all the way to that last uh, – that touchdown that, that Ken had the O line, and then you know Colby and Will and, and Noah Fant. You see those guys on the edge, really pushing the pile into the into the end zone and helping Ken. So, 
Yeah, I think Colby's really rounded his game out nicely where he's really a complete player. Uh, he can do a little bit of everything and, and I think that's a you know really what we have with our tight end group is uh, you know with Noah's uh, blocking and you know showed off his uh, his speed at the uh, in the fourth quarter there on on the long reception but all three of those guys can do a good job in the pass game whether they're running routes or protecting and then also in the run game you know being versatile and being able to handle whether it's in line or or second level blocks. Remember a situation being as a where you've had a team yeah, you know that was that was a great job by those guys. You know, we, it, we you know you don't really feel it, you don't really realize it until kind of the post game guys talk about it. But you know it was a good mix. You know it, between some runs that we converted on and 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 Gino using his legs. Uh, you know when the, the coverage was there, but there was a, a lane that he could take. So you know really those conversions happened in a bunch of different. Uh, fashions, you know, lock it getting open, uh, you know, there. So just a good, you know, mix and match of different ways to, to convert on third down. And they all happen to have, you know, consecutive outcomes in a, in a positive sense for us. In the last two games, you've basically had six touchdown drives at, at the end of games. Tyler dropped the, what, the other one. But like to have Geno have those moments where he's coming through in those late late game situations. What have you seen from him over the last two weeks in those spots and when, when you guys have needed those late drives for either to, to take the lead and run away with it or, or hold off it, that he's been able to do that? Yeah, I think going back to his consistency, so Gino throughout the first, second, third quarters has been the same guy and then in the fourth quarter when you know, the, the crowd's getting into it or the, the situation might seem like it's different. He's really kept it the same, you know, hasn't tried to make anything up in those scenarios and, and really our, our offense as a whole of just playing really consistent and really relying on the fundamentals and the belief in the basics uh, at those most critical points have, have made those just like when we come out here and, and practice and have these hard competitive periods in, in practice trying to simulate those game uh, situations, you know, really trying to put your mind in the same uh, mind frame that that fourth quarter is no different than those situations and they've done a great job with that. It seems like he's really handled some checks at the line of scrimmage well, whether it's the check to the Rashad run in Detroit or mm -hmm. some of the plays this last week. What, what, what does he see at the line of scrimmage that's made him really effective in those spots too? I think Gino's understanding of the defensive structure as a whole, you know, so it's not just with his uh, reads in the pass game. He has a great understanding of, of the run game structures that we're seeing. So, you know, different uh, toolbox uh, 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 options that he has throughout the course of a game. He's, he's done a good job getting to those at, at some of the most critical times and, and getting us into positive plays uh, throughout the film study throughout the week. What's the relationship between you, Andy Gibson, Geno Smith, and Austin? Because I mean, that's kind of a, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a. You know, I guess it's like the football world, the six degrees of separation. But you know, the uh, you know Andy and I have been have been friends for a long time, uh, going all the way back to college, and then had a chance to work together early when we we're just trying to figure everything out. And here we are, still trying to figure everything out, just uh, in a, in a different location. But you know, he's been a great help to me, great sounding board, and, and great with the communication with the offensive line. And then when you talk about being around Austin Blythe in the past, just having a uh, understanding of what he can bring to the table from that communication standpoint, uh, and then. You know, so Austin comes in from the outside and, and uh, really blends right in with, you know, Andy and I being on the same page with him. And then the, the great part was that Austin and Gino really start to see the game through the same lens. And so those guys' communication, which is still, you know, it's still a player's game and, and their level of communication out on the field uh, is really what allows us to make these plays come to life. Gino Smith told us he's really mindful of how far deep he drops and the limit his drops for his lineman to just ride guys out if they're sure. going to go up there. And that seemed to what happened on that third and 12 when he ran 18 yards. Mm -hmm. Abe Lucas just yeah, Abe did a great job with that wide rush right there, really. You know, and that and that I think comes to you know different plays are all going to have different pocket depths and understanding what's the the depth and the rhythm of each play and 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 knowing when your back foot hits the ground, you know what's that point in which I'm putting the old lineman sets in danger or when's the time when I can step up when the interior of the of the pocket is nice and firm where there's a lane. How much did you emphasize that for this season for the quarterbacks you have now? Yeah, I think it's a it's a for all our quarterbacks. You know, going back to OTAs when we talk about uh, pocket depth and and really the pocket integrity. I think that's a. Uh 
a, a main part of, you know, how are we going to keep the protection solid? And so those guys, whether it was Drew and then Sean came into the mix here, uh, but all throughout OTAs and in training camp, you know, really preaching that pocket depth on each play. So they understand, you know, are they putting the tackles or the guards or the center in advantageous spots from the angles, uh, given where their drop goes. Is that new or renewed emphasis on that this season? I think it's something we always gonna, we're always going to start with with the quarterbacks. You know, when you start with the fundamentals of the of the drop and you know the integrity of the pocket, that's going to be a day one thing from from OTAs on. As an offensive guy, what do you appreciate or amazed by that Tom Brady does? Oh man, this, the list could be endless. You know, I think he does an unbelievable job of uh, you know getting the ball out, finding finding the open guy. He's seen every structure there is. He he knows everything that's going on throughout the course of a game. Uh, and his competitive drive is, is, is second to none. You were around him obviously earlier in your coaching career. Did you mm-hmm. guys have much of a relationship or what kind of? Yeah, you know, again, he had a great influence on me, and you know, I was a chance to be around him as an intern and then as a quality control coach there and in different spots uh, throughout the, the time in, in New England. And just absorbing and watching his day in and day out preparation, I think that was something that, that I've, I've taken with me everywhere I've been. Just knowing that the guy that's in front and center in the meetings, you know, from day one all the way through his career and, and a guy that, you know, really goes about his work the right way with that, like I said, that competitive drive to be the best. Is there any one thing you saw there in New England that were like, wow, this is, I close my mind what he does compared to what an average NFL quarterback might be? I think just as an obsession with being great, you know, and, 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 you know, the, the amount of times that he worked on his mechanics, all the basics, you know, you go back to all these great players, go to, to Kobe, or you hear the stories of, the, of great players, and, and so many times it comes back to, to how well they do the little things. And I think the, the time around him, just seeing how consistent he was and, and every day, you know, no matter how, ma- uh, how much success he had already had, it was always that drive to keep getting a little bit better every single day. Junior, you're an avid this year. It hasn't been a typical uh, situation for anything with Russell going down and new quarterback coming in. But I'm curious, when you look at the chain wall in the offensive coordinator now versus the guy who started off a year and a half ago, what, what's different about you as, a, as an OC? What do you notice that maybe? I think just uh, you know every day trying to continue to grow and learn from the the different experiences. I think it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. The, you know the support from Coach Carroll and and you know the coaching staff and you know continuing to grow and build and, and learn each other as as this process has gone on and you know continuing to know that there's you know some mistakes are going to happen throughout this this journey and really learn from each of those and and try to you know put the team in the best position to win the next time those scenarios come up. What are you getting out of the? It happens, you know, the Gabe and Abe combo on the right side there. Yeah, no, I think with that, with Phil and and Gabe, you have two guys that are capable starters at that position, and so I think getting a chance, they both have earned the the right to be on the field, and and I think it's it's worked out well so far. And I think like anything else, like any of the positions, you know, it's a long season. I think it's it's a helpful thing for us right now, and each week we'll kind of see how that goes throughout the course of the games. But right now, you know, you got those guys that are both, like I said, playing at a starter level, so it's good to get both those guys in, and you know, only help helps us in the fourth quarter as, as guys are fresh there. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks.